Hello everybody, it's Nick here. Hope you guys had a great weekend. I picked up a couple games yesterday. Uh, one of them that my dad bought me and the other one that I bought myself. And yeah, let me show them to you guys. Now you guys saw that I already got a Vigilante 8. You know, after I had to take that game back. And yeah, that was just weird that, you know, that game would work on every other Genesis except mine. But every other game would work on my Genesis. It's just, man, it doesn't make sense. But anyways... I don't know what that could be, and oh well, it's over and done with. I could just buy another copy on eBay. Anyways, the first game is Tetris Flash. Now, this was released in the USA as Tetris 2, and you might be like, well, don't you already have that in your collection? Why are you buying the same game twice? Well, because, you know, I want to review these games, and I, you know, the, you know, the Famicom is pretty much the only way I can record it. Now, this is pretty much exactly the same as the US version. I... I if I remember right, there's no Japanese in it. It's all in English. The only huge difference is, of course, the name of the game, but the title screen's different, too. And not just, you know, not just because it shows, like, a different, you know, the different name, but it's uh, it's actually got a different background, which is cool. It looks better than the U.S. version, though. I don't know why they changed it. Now, this game early... Yeah, this game was developed by a company called Tose, and they never put their name on anything. Um, they just said they like to be secretive, they like to be mysterious, so, yeah, you you will not see their name on this game, guaranteed. If you find it, you will win a cookie, you know. And what's really interesting is the Canadian Copyright Database actually lists every single person who worked on this game, same as the Super Nintendo version, which I also have. And I don't know how they got that information. I mean, I'm sure it had something to do with, like, contacting the company, but... You know, with that company that loves to be as secretive as them, you know, I'm surprised they would even give any information like that up. Too bad the U.S. doesn't have a database like that, because that would be freaking cool. Now, this cost me 20 bucks, and on eBay you can get a little bit cheaper, like 15 but then you got to take into account the shipping, which is around 5 bucks. so you're basically paying the same price. So, I guess, you know, it's a okay deal. Uh, do you guys want me to unwrap it, right? Well, here we go. If I can get this freaking thing, ah! Uh, I don't know where my pocket knife is offhand, but uh, damn, this is gonna be hard to open. I can already tell that. Ah, uh, shit! I don't want to freaking damage the box either. Ugh. But you know, I almost bought the Game Boy version of Tetris too. I should have done that. You know. Uh, I got scissors. Hopefully that will work. I don't know, I just hate doing this. I like that they like to keep them in good shape, though. That's, that's good. You know, we need more game stores like that, you know? Okay. <laughs> I'm close to getting done. Uh, fuck. Okay. There we go. Uh, damn. This, this, come on, get off. There we go. So, here we go, we got our box, and we're gonna open it up and see what's in here. I am expecting that since I paid 20 bucks for it, it will be complete. Um, is it? Okay, well, we got our cartridge here. Pretty cool. Um, it's my first red Famicom cartridge, which is awesome because red is my favorite color. Then we got our instruction manual. And again, doesn't even say on the back who worked on the, you know, who actually developed it, but that's no surprise. Um, okay, and you got your contents here, your table of contents, and yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, I like how back then they actually had to, actually I wonder how they did that. Like, like in a lot of NES games, like if you looked on the back of the box, this looked you know, it looked like the screenshots were taken from a TV or something. You know, someone just put a camera up to a TV and, you know, took a snapshot. But here it actually looks like they did it on, like, an emulator or something, which I know, you know, isn't what happened, because, you know, back then there weren't emulators or anything like that. Um, they do give you a lot of telephone numbers to call uh, for Nintendo. Uh, so that's interesting. If you guys want to call any of them, they, they're probably non-existent now, but there you go. So this is an awesome game. I'm glad I picked that up. Um, just Tetris is great. You know, I'm not the hugest Tetris fan, despite me buying two Tetris games today.
but I like it. You know, it's it's not a bad game. Then again, I'd be masochistic to say that it is. Um, the thing about Tetris 2, though, or Flash, whatever you want to call it, um, is that it's very controversial in that, you know, most people didn't like this game. Because, you know, it had nothing to do with the first game besides, well, the pieces being the same and then some. But, you know, you got to take into account, you know, you know, just because it's, you know, different from the first game doesn't make it bad. And if, really, Alexei Pajitinov actually designed this game, too, then that's pretty badass. And, of course, then there's always um, Tetris 2 and Bombless, which is actually not really Tetris 2. It's just, you know, Tetris, but they only released that in Japan. So, that sucks. But... It was developed by, you know, the same guys who made Dragon Warrior. That was my dad's favorite RPG. Well, I don't know if that was his favorite or Pool of Radiance was, but he loved um, Dragon Warrior, so... I'll have to play through that sometime. I know a friend of mine did a walkthrough of it. Then here we got, a, you know, Tetris, you know, regular. So you might feel like, well, is that the same as the U.S. version? And the answer to your question is no. This is actually a completely different Tetris game than the U.S. version. This one, while Nintendo developed the, you know, the USA version, this one was actually developed by Bulletproof Software. Um, so this is pretty cool. Oh, and they have a copyright pretension. I didn't know that. I know it uses a couple songs from the NES game, like the unlicensed one, not the, you know, USA one. But, uh, yeah, this is a... It's kind of like a poor man's version of Tetris. It's not the best version, but it's not a horrible, horrible Tetris game. In fact, you know, I, I really can't decide whether I like this one better or the USA version better. It's kind of a challenge. But yeah, not a bad game. You know, give it a try if you're really that big of a Tetris fan. The controls do take some getting used to, though. I will say that. So, um, they, they are a little bit disorienting, should I say? So anyways... So yeah, definitely cool pickups. I really thank my dad for getting me Tetris Flash since it was 20 freaking dollars. I know it's a lot, but he did, he did pay a lot of money for my sister's gas, so... Anyways, um, now there's a thrift store around me that's hiring, so I'm going to try applying there right now. So I'm going to talk to you guys later, and hopefully, um, yeah, I get a job soon. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm still talking to this band. I really want to meet up with them, so... Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great week, and I hope to upload a review sooner or later. And yeah, stay tuned. So, peace out. Thank you for watching. Oh, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Hope you had a good one.